downloads and there it is right so this is the one that just started that I canceled but uh, you can see that though there's the other one there either way I can double click on it and you're gonna get you know this package as package file you have an install that um, sh in case you want to remove it um, so we're just gonna double click on this and it's going to fail it's gonna say basically I don't know who give you this file but it's not signed we don't know it it's untrusted that's okay or we tried to get guys and so what you're gonna do is along your option slash alternate key they're both the same it says ALT on top and the bottom say option in Mac so you hold that down and then you right click and then you say open while you open down all along the key you the option key you right click and say open and now notice that instead of having an open button that just fails I have open and cancel and now when I do open it starts to run now here's the other thing I'm running now as a different user um, of my system other than the administrator so um, you need to type in the admin user and password for your system if you are not the other administrator now if you're the only person using your Mac chances are the current you, you, you the current user is the administrative user and it will already provide you with your username and then just asking you for your password if you're not like in my case here because I'm running as a different user because I want to show you guys how to set up your environment my environment is already kind of set up you know with git and config and so on so that's why I'm not using that but anyway in other videos you would have seen my environment you know it's all colorful and all that sort of stuff so anyway I'll show you guys how to get there using this kind of other user account um, so here you would type your username and password so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type the username and password for the admin user and so that just happens to be me password and there we go and now uh, I enter that say enter there or click on it and to modify the system and it should continue and do the install um, it's not giving me uh, okay here we go ah, so now I type that I click on it was hiding at the back there uh, click on continue install just follow the prompt oh there it is prompt again okay bro and my password is go sleep on no cat no it's not <laughs> just kidding all right uh, and so it's installed successfully and I do close okay so that's it now you can remove these files at this time okay um, you won't need them anymore so you can move them to trash and then I could empty the trash that's fine okay oh uh, one thing it in Mac it monks the image here as a virtual drive so I, I have to eject it um, but once I do that and it's gonna take a minute I can go back and say um, empty trash okay all right so uh, good to continue all right so that is all nice and dandy and I can close that we don't need to do anything else now if you look now and you say git minus minus version you're gonna see that though uh, it's still saying that old version right um, remember we had this version if you happen to have had a version before you may not see the new version if you didn't have Git before you're gonna see the new version if you don't then just quit this terminal and reopen it so do quit and then reopen the terminal and then type git and you should see git minus minus version and you should see the new one you install no we still seen the old one for the people who have an old one right remember I told you that's gonna happen so you type which minus a and then you type git now which is a Unix command that tells you where something is located where command is located and what you see in here is it's saying oh I have two of them there's one in user bin git and I happen to know this is the one that is installed by Apple and I could just type slash user bin git minus minus version and that's gonna tell me what did I mess up ah, there we go USR not user all right so that tells me that and so I should expect that if I type user local git bin git minus minus version this should be my version 2.50 so what we're seeing is that the one we install is look installed here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually 
copy and paste the path. So I'm going to do it by highlighting this, then do edit, copy. I'm going to copy the path um, where this version of Git is located. And I'm going to do Vim, or actually, you can use something else. You can use text edit that comes in Mac, and you can type open that bash RC. Um, so and do minus ls minus a. So let's see which file it's using. So there's a bash history, there's a bash profile. Oh, bash profile. So let's do open that bash underscore profile. And when I do that, um, it's going to open this file uh, in text edit. And so uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to say, remember your file might not look exactly like mine. I want to say path equals to dollar sign path. Oh, no, I actually want to say, I want to paste this first that I copied. So I want to do edit and then paste. So I paste that path I copied before, colon, dollar sign path. Now, what am, what am I doing here? Well, the way programs are found, find, um, Unix decide which program to run because let's say we have two installed here. How did it know how, which, which one of these directories, whether you're going to use our bin directory first or use a local bin? Well, that's determined by your path variable. Windows have the same thing too. So if I do echo dollar sign path, you see my path variable say, okay, um, look here for some stuff first, colon, then look in user local bin, right? And then if something is in user local bin, then use that. But Git, as you, if you look here, Git is not actually in user local bin. It's actually in user local Git bin. So that it's not going to find it. Then afterwards, look in user bin. So then look in this location. Then go in slash bin slash, slash user s bin and yada yada. And it keeps going on, right? And then at the end of it, notice what's at the end. It's user local Git bin. So that's all the way to the end. So I don't want that. So what I want instead is to put this in front. So when I type the git command and start looking for git, it should look in here first, then look in all those other places. So that's what I'm doing. I'm saying, hey, I want my path to be this followed by whatever the path variable happened to be at that time, append this to the existing path variable on um, so create a new path there where I prepend this location that I want first. And so I'm going to say file, save, and then I'm going to quit it. Right? Now, in order for this to take effect, I'll have to exit and log back in. But there's a shortcut to have this take effect. You can type that bash profile. And uh, essentially, yeah, where's my directory? LS minus A. So dash bash profile. So source dash bash profile. And so what that does is um, it forces the shell to reread the this file. And so now when I type which git, you see it how it finds the one that's inside of user local git bin because I now have a pad variable that puts uh, you know, well actually I did something I forgot to do. So <laughs> I'm actually supposed to do export. And the difference is you can set the path and then it can only take effect in that shell or you can do export in which it takes it um, setting your environment. So a um, little subtle difference, but yeah, I need to set do export, hence why you don't see um, the the effect when I run the command echo because that's another shell that's temporarily created to run that command. And so it had the whole value, whereas um, the existing shell I'm in had the path. Yeah, it's a little confusing. Don't worry about it. Just trust me, you have to do export. And now I'm going to source again. And what you're going to see is the accumulated effects of me sourcing so often. And so when I echo my path, you can see, um, well, that's not what I expected. I expected to see. Um, so it's still, oh, okay. So that script that I'm running at the end, the NV, it's it's um, it's preparing uh, its own environmental variable, uh, NVM. Don't worry about NVM yet. And then, then it's putting what I want in front of all the other stuff that was there. So the first time it actually did put um, 
local git bin and then the, all the other path that was there but just trust me that oh, i need export export would have worked in that shell but it wouldn't work in any other shell that was derived so um that that that, that wouldn't want to work well so i need to export and so yes yeah, so just like i said when i did when i do know which um which git it's finding the right git and i could do git minus minus version i don't have to type the whole path and i get to 2.51 and i could do exit or quit the shell and i can reopen it and if i type git git minus version i'll get the right version right um so both of them are still there i can type uh, which minus a to, to get all of them and you can see that's how what it's doing is it's looking through my my echo my um path and it's fun, it found this directory twice right because it had the way i prepended then that the user and then this was uh, added to the end you remember i showed that it was the end but i want so that's why it's finding git three times because it's going through the path and just in all those path variables just looking through all of them and every way it finds it it just prints it out so even if it found it once it more than once it's just printing it out all right so that's not a problem so that's all there is to install it and in terms of using it we're going to show oh, i'm going to show in another video how to configure git so we could make a directory called test for example we could cd into test and i could say git in it and that creates a git initialization directory with in it my um, repository but that's just to show that it's working, okay? Um, we'll continue. I'll have a video that shows how to customize configured Git for all the environments because the configuration is the same. So that's why I don't want to show for each environment at the end of it after we install it how to configure it because I just want to keep the installation to just installation and then afterward I start showing how to configure and how to use. So, all right, that's it. Um, hopefully this makes sense just to quickly review just because the Mac one is probably a little bit confusing. You might have already had Git installed. Don't sweat it. Go ahead and still download and install the latest one because chances are the one you have is probably old. Um, if you didn't have it installed, then ignore the whole, I had a previous Git version, just install the one from the website and then you're done. It's going to be in your path. Now, if you had a previous version, then you need to do an extra step because the previous version would, would be the, um, the one that's being picked up first. You need to open your dash bash underscore profile file and export and export a new path variable that's equals to the location that where git was installed and colon evaluate the current path variable part variable and append it and you probably wouldn't have this in your thing so don't even worry about it right and so then everything is going to be fine. You can exit, log out to your account, log back in, and you'll see that when you type git, you're going to be picking up the most recent one. And so you can verify that, that is the case. If that doesn't work for you, just um, comment on, on the video and then let me know what problems you're having and then I'll try and sort it out for you. Okay? All right. Thanks. See you in the next video. All right. Bye. And the next video to this is going to be how to configure git. All right. Bye.